lot of times in biochemistry when you want to filter a solution, either just to get rid of big clumps of stuff or to sterilize it. And so there are different ways that we can filter things, including syringe filters, um, vacuum filters, and centrifugal filters. Basically, you just need some way to push things through the filter. Um, and so you can use like physical force, you could use like vacuum, or you could use um, centrifugal force by spinning these. But how do you choose? So one is like the volume. So if you have a bigger volume, you're typically gonna use like vacuum filtration. And so these come in different sizes. Um, there are ones that are like these sterile ones that come like this. Some of these for the bigger sizes, they'll just come with the top part and then you hook it on to um, your bottom. You pick it in and then you put your, um, you hook it up to the vacuum. There are also reusable ones um, and these aren't sterile obviously but um, then you have different membranes that you can put on. And so for all of these, you're going to have to choose your membrane. Um, typically, you're going to want to choose the membrane based on what you're filtering. In the cases where you're filtering these biochemical solutions, we're typically dealing with aqueous solutions, so water-based solutions. So we want a membrane that is going to be hydrophilic, so it likes the water. The water actually isn't gonna just like get repelled from the membrane because then it would be really hard to get things through, right? But if you're working with like an organic solvent or something, your membrane choice would differ. Often what we're using are like PES membranes um, or ni um, nylon um, cellulose nitrate. Um, so nitrocellulose, you don't want to use this if you're trying to filter a protein solution because proteins will bind to it. But if you're trying to get proteins away from a solution, like sometimes when I'm working with like trying to keep things RNAs free, I want to get those RNAs, so those RNA chewing proteins, I want to keep them out of my solution and so then they would use these but not with my protein. Um, so typically we're using like some sort of treated PBDF or PES or something, cellulose acetate, um, one of these types of things um, are, are good for these. You want something that's not going to bind to the protein typically. Um, and there's various other specifications that might matter depending on what you're trying to filter. Okay. So for all of these, you're gonna be choosing your membrane. Um, and one of the things with the membrane is you have to choose like the pore size of the membrane. And so if you want things to be sterile, you're gonna need really, really tiny holes. So basically these filters are just going to be these um, material that is compatible with your things. It's not gonna have a bunch of extractables where basically when the liquid's going through, then like parts of the membrane are coming off and into your liquid, you don't want that to happen. Um, and so then you want to choose the pore size. Um, so if you want things sterile, you're typically dealing with like a 0.2 or a 0.22 micron um, filter. So this is like a 0.22. Um, this is going to keep out like bacteria um, and um, other microbes, not like viruses and small viruses and stuff, but those are still small enough to get through. Um, but these bacteria, like fungal spores and all of this stuff should be kept out, as well as any sort of like clumped up aggregates or anything. If for, you just want to keep those clumped out aggregates away, um, you can use like a 0.45 uh, micron or even like a 1.2 or whatever. Um, sometimes it can be helpful to use a bigger um, a bigger pore size because you're, the smaller the pore size, the harder it is to push things through. So you don't want to use like, you might think like, why don't I just use like a 0.1 or something like all the time? Well, that's gonna be really hard to either like push things through or it's gonna take forever to vacuum things through um, or to spin things through, etc. So the smaller the pore, the harder it's gonna be for things to get through. Um, and if you don't care about getting those really tiny things um, like filtered out, then you can use a bigger pore size, um, especially if you're dealing with lysates or something. Um, so some lysates are gonna be all goopy and gumpy. Um, so typically I would use like a um, 0.45 for like bacterial um, lysates and then lysates when you just like break open the cells and then you're trying to like purify stuff out of it. There's gonna be a bunch of gumpy stuff. Um, which you want to keep out um, and then for like insect cells those tend to be like harder to filter like the, the lysate and so I typically do like a 1.2 micron filter um, but that's just technical talk um, but basically you can see that I'm using these bigger pore size because it's so hard to push through um, so typically with that I'm using a syringe filter you want to syringe filter anything that you're going to put on a protein purification machine so like on an active on an FPLC um, those lines are really sensitive and so you want to filter anything that you're going to put through you also filtering can be helpful even if you're just doing like a protein purification and batch method or something um, just because like all that goopiness can slow things down um, if that made sense to you hope that made sense um, and if not you probably it's not something you care about anyway but anyway 
that is the um, the basics of the pore size. Um, so you choose the pore size that is going to be small enough to get out what you want to keep out, um, but big enough that it's not going to take you forever to filter. Um, sometimes the filters, if you have a smaller pore size, if you need that smaller pore size, what happens is the filters can get clogged, um, and so you can use multiple filters. And so sometimes if you have those really glumpy lysates, you'll have to use like multiple, um, multiple of these syringe um, filters. Um, and but of course, then you're wasting a bunch of filters if you didn't need to use that small of a size anyway. Oh, and in my old lab, um, one of my colleagues had this trick where you can use like one of those grout, um, those grout pusher things you can actually if you hook it up right you can get put the syringe in there and then use that thing and like push down um and it helps give you some um, leverage and a little extra arm strength when you're trying to push through those syringes but be careful that you don't like break them or make anything explode um speaking of these filters another thing you have to choose is like the size so these filters come in different these syringe filters basically how they work is they have a lurlock connection that then you can syringe you can attach any size syringe to them because these syringes are all made so that they have this like generic connection um so i could use like a tiny little syringe or i could use a big syringe depending on how much volume i have but if i have a tiny little volume i'm not going to want to use a big um big filter i'm not going to want to use one of these like um 45 or 30 or whatever 30 millimeter i think um size ones you'd want to use a much smaller one because what's going to happen is you're going to have some dead volume so both stuff that's kept in this part as, and the bottom part as well as stuff that gets like stuck on the membrane so you might say take a little bit of your liquid and then you try to filter it with one of these syringe filters that's too big and you're like where did my liquid go i had a mill i put it through and now i have like half a mil what happened well, it's stuck on your membrane or it's stuck in the little plastic casing. So that's why you want to use a smaller diameter filter when you have a smaller amount of liquid. Um, and you can find guides online about what relative volumes you should use for what purposes. Ones that we commonly use are like the 25 uh, millimeter and like the 30 millimeter, I think. Um, and so that, that's like the diameter. And then you also have the choice of the membrane, um, both the composition of the membrane and then the size of the pore size. Um, again, the smaller though, the, the diameter, the less surface area, so the slower it's gonna be for things to get through, um, the harder you're gonna have to push and you don't wanna push too hard or else things might explode or something too. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about getting things through these syringe filters, because um, we use these a lot. So the first thing is you have to like somehow get the liquid in. Um, so you can like just like pull through without a needle um, if you're if it will fit into the bottom of the tube so if you're trying to do something from like a 15 mil falcon or something it's not gonna work to try to do it like this um, so one thing that you can do is you can actually hook up the filter first but you have to take out the plunger because you're not gonna be able to pull out the plunger when you have it on um, then you can put your syringe on pour in your solution and push down well if you try to push down it's going to be really really hard because you have a ton of this air built up so what you can do is you can flip things over make sure this is tightly in there though um, and then you can take off the filter and push the syringe down until you just have a little bit of air left in there and then cap it and push through if you're able to pull things out directly what you can do is you can actually especially for a smaller volume if you're really worried about making sure everything gets through the membrane, pull a little bit of air up first. So pull a little air up before you then pull your sample up. Now what happens is when you go and you push out, but remember you'd want to have a smaller, smaller disc. Um, now when you push out, there's going to be a little air that's going to be above your sample that then is going to help push everything through um, and hopefully you will lose less that way. So those are the syringe filters. Um, we also have centrifugal filters. Um, and so these come in a variety of sizes. Um, so you have little ones and bigger ones, and they also come in a variety of different membranes. Um, but the key thing is that you don't want to confuse them for an ultra filtration device. So basically with the, um, or like a spin concentrator. So basically these, when the filtration, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of big things. With the, um, so anything that is smaller than like a bacteria is gonna get through one of those 0.2 microns. 
and I'm, oh, and a micron's like a micrometer, micrometer, um, so it's like a millionth of, no, yeah, millionth of a um, millimeter, so, so, or a meter, so it's small. Basically, it's really small. Um, but when you're doing like ultra filtration here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to often concentrate proteins and or get rid of any like salts and that sort of thing. So we want those salts and all that little stuff to get through, but we want our proteins to stay in. Now think about a bacterial cell. It's gonna be way bigger than a protein because well, bacteria are going to have a bunch of proteins um, in them, right? And so if you think about that, well, the protein's got, gotta be a lot smaller than a bacteria, right? Right. So your proteins are going to need smaller pores if you want to try to keep the proteins in while you're getting the smaller stuff out. And so we can choose different um, like membranes pore sizes and things for our proteins. We're typically talking in terms of like molecular weight kill, cutoff and kill daltons and protein sizes and stuff like that more in another post. But the basic is you want your protein to stay in and all the other little stuff to go through. So your pores are going to be a lot smaller than with the filter. With the filter, then your protein, you want your protein um, to go through and you want the bigger stuff to get stuck. And so your protein is going to be in the part that you keep um, down the, the part that goes through. Whereas with this, your protein is going to be in the part you keep is going to be the part that gets stuck on the top in this little chamber. So don't confuse the um, the ultra filtration um, or the centrifugal filters with the just like a traditional filter. Um, so don't make that mistake. Okay, so that's the basics, and yeah, hope that helped. Oh, another thing is like when you get these like sterile ones or whatever, then the bottom container can you can get a, like a sterile bottom container too. This is really good for things like cell culture and stuff like that where you need to keep things really sterile. Um, other options for sterilizing things are like autoclaving and things like that. But when you just have a little bit of solutions, um, we typically um, go for the syringe filter and it's really helpful for when you're just making salt solutions, when you're making um, things like that. Um, yeah, it's really helpful. I'm going to use one this morning. Um, so yeah, hope that helped.